Gillian. I'm delighted to be here. Um, as Janine said, um, I yeah, I'm going to speak briefly about what I've been up to since I was at school years ago, um, as you can probably tell. But hopefully, it'll show you that actually at school, um, even if you don't know what you want to be um, in life in terms of your career, it's okay. It's totally cool. And actually, I'm not even sure if I know now what I want to be when I grow up. So I'm from a place called Dundee. Has anybody been to Dundee? Ooh. Yeah. Well done for you for admitting it. It's a good, it's a great city. Um, and we've got the V&A Dundee coming, which is a big new museum, but it's going to be much more interesting than a museum. It's a design um, centre. So if you do art and design at school, it, it should be really interesting for you to come along. So I actually run these nights, these type of events, but for 500 people. So I don't know how many people we've got in the room today, but um, it's exactly the same format. We get loads of people to come along and speak about what they do, and, and loads of people come along and see it. This is me when I was about 20, I think, just finishing art school. And then this is me uh, and my, my flatmates and friends from art school um, meeting probably about 15 years later, which is totally scary. Honestly, you really never think you're going to age, um, but you do, sadly. So you'll be like that too one day. When I was in primary two, I was told that I was scared of numbers. And again, I don't know if anybody really dislikes maths. Anybody here? But I was one of those. So I, I was petrified of numbers and it actually put me off doing any kind of music or anything like that because I just couldn't understand numbers. Now um, what I do is a lot of more technical stuff, but the way that I got into art and design was through technical drawing. Uh, I don't know, even know if that still exists as a subject, but I really liked um, working things out three-dimensionally. And, it, and I didn't actually realise that I was doing numbers by doing that, but it got me into it in a way that, um, yeah, I didn't think I would. So I went to do product design at, at uh, art school. So that's about making things like furniture, uh, probably not light bulbs, that's not my hand, um, obviously it's a man. But yeah, we throughout my four years at art school, it was really good because I got to kind of do lots of different products, but I realised that I didn't want to make things when I came out. I wanted to work with people. So I went to work for different companies and I led the development of these kind of educational tools, but really interesting ones. So helping people start up their own business. Starting up their own business was not something I'd ever thought about doing until much later in my life, which is when this came in. So. I started to think about how do we get people interested in our city. So we, we developed an online platform so you could go on and um, put what you loved about the city and what you would love to see happen in the future of the city. We also created these downloadable pencil flag templates, so using my product design skills. So you could kind of download that template, print it out, cut it out and turn it into a flag. And we got people right around the world to kind of fly these little flags and take pictures and share them on social media. So I kind of came into digital um, through lots of different ways, but it was through engaging with people. And that's what, why a big focus of my thing is about people. It's not really about digital skills. It's, it's about um, how you get communities together. So these are people flying their flags, got them flying them from Australia to up in the air in the sky, uh, to Sydney, sorry, Sydney to China, all over the world. And so from there, I developed a real interest in how, how we use digital to bring people together. So this is, the, this is the business that I now run. I founded and I now run. And again, as I said, I had no ambitions of starting a business. It's called Creative Dundee, and we run lots of events. We have an online platform, and this is our team um, upside, not upside down. What do you call that? Like from above, I guess. Um, and uh, there's, there's now four of us. And we do lots of things to try and make the city really interesting, vibrant, creative, um, and just a great place for young people in particular to, to kind of base their what they do there. So we work with lots of different artists and designers and creative businesses, and this is where we work. And I guess I'm showing that because this is all I need in my life to work with, um, apart from people, obviously. But we can move around pretty quickly, and we're based in this really interesting co-working space, a bit like Codebase that you've just heard about from Janine. And, and these are some of the, the guys and girls that I work with, and they are all working on digital, uh, digital things, so app development, uh, video games, uh, yeah, 
just lots of really interesting work. And the, the, why it's so good is that we all share skills and understanding of things, so it doesn't matter if we don't know anything, somebody else will. And this is our other uh, key uh, co-worker in our space, who's a griffin, and he was made by a games company that were moving out of the space and they couldn't take him with or her. I don't actually know if it's a him or her. So we, we inherited him, her. And um, as I say, we work with lots of different artists and designers, so we always bring different people in to do the design work for, for all the events we do. And so that helps people get jobs and, and get opportunities. Um, and uh, again, that's one of our picture kitchen nights. But we also run lots of other things like kind of digital skills sessions. So um, working with digital artists to, to help uh, other people learn new skills, which is really exciting. And it's just, as was said by Janine, like digital skills, you're going to be inventing the future jobs of tomorrow, which is kind of really interesting. Um, one of the big reasons that I do what I do is because I like travelling and I like being able to just go away with my laptop and phone and work from wherever. And I get lots of opportunities now to go and speak in, in Bannockburg in high school, in, in all sorts of places around the world, which is really exciting. Um, but I've still got a real interest in kind of product design and uh, Lego. This is in uh, Denmark in the Lego house that's there and they've built all these amazing kind of structures out of, uh, out of Lego. So I would say that if you've got an interest in something, just start um, kind of helping that interest grow. Because yeah, ideas like are the most powerful thing in the world. But again, don't worry if you don't know what you want to be right now, or even in the next five, 10 years, it's okay. Eventually it'll come and, and you can focus too much on worrying about what your career might look like and you might be missing something obvious. Um, so I would just say, follow your kind of your gut and your heart and um, hopefully things will all come out all right in the end. Okay, thank you.